ultimately money's the money's the result. Uh, money is what comes from all of these things um, uh, being developed uh, and and uh, value value respectively uh, served. Um, you know, our looking at people from a from a people first lens, uh, we have to recognize the unique perspective that each person brings, the unique circumstances that their uh, that their lives. Uh, involve um, the flexibility uh, and the unique experience that it requires for them to be their their respective best. And when a company is able to offer that you know, level of flexibility, uh, support, uh, inclusivity, uh, then 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 those individuals could be their respective best. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammond. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Company profits are critical for the success and sustainability of your business. I won't argue that money's important, but money is a result to actually the other things that are actually more important inside of businesses. When you think about the money that you're trying to create, the profits you're trying to create, the clients you're trying to serve, you want to also put equal footing onto how are you building a culture of sustainability? How are you creating the connection necessary as a leader to put people first? In fact, today we're talking about putting people first even before company profits. Now, when I think about this concept of putting people first, it is not new. A lot of the, the conversations I've had on the podcast have talked about the importance of you know, employee first. But today we're going to look at diversion and inclusion inside of this people first concept. Putting people first is very important. Today, our special guest is Boris Epstein. He's the founder of Bink. Uh, they are a two-time Inc. company. They were number 3250 on the Inc. list in 2019. Um, they've seen some tough times through the COVID, much like you have in your company. But what they've done is really had to reconnect with their own diversity and inclusion, reconnect to the foundational elements of sustainability as a company. Today, we talk about some of those key elements. We talk about putting people first, even before company profits. When you think about your role as a company leader, make sure you're continuing to evolve to be the leader that your team craves. If you haven't already gotten the training, make sure you go to genehammett.com forward slash training, where you'll see the three mistakes that are often made by leaders that are fixable in their journey to create a team of A players. So learn how to create a team of A players at genehammett.com forward slash training. Now here's the interview. Boris, how are you? Doing well. Uh, nice, to, nice to be here with you, Gene. Excited to have you on the podcast. Uh, we're going to talk about diversity and inclusion, but I want to give the audience a chance to tune in to um, who is Bink and, and what do you guys do? Yeah, good, good question. Uh, so we, we talk about Bink as the technology industry's dedicated, flexible recruiting team. Uh, we're about a 100 person company right now, uh, made up primarily of talent acquisition professionals, recruiters, sourcers. Uh, and we work uh, on the inside of uh, fast-growing technology companies all around uh, the country. So companies like Robinhood or DoorDash or Stripe or Square, et cetera. Uh, those are companies uh, where our team members are working on the inside of uh, to help them achieve their respective uh, hiring goals. Well, you've got uh, many perspectives around what makes companies tick. Uh, I know that looking at the background of Bink and, and what you stand for, you're really excited about not just the the impact you've made as a business, but but the culture you're building there. Tell us a little bit about the way you see the culture of your company. Yeah, that's a good uh, good 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 question. So um, we've been in business for 18 years, uh, quite a long time. Um, while times have changed, the industry has changed. Uh, the way we approach business has changed. Uh, our our north star uh, has has always been two two very consistent points. One is to offer a distinguished recruiting alternative. Uh, so that technology companies uh, have uh, a, a third choice to what we consider to be very, you know, status quo and uh, suboptimal solutions to their total hiring uh, problem. That's one. The second one is around the cultural piece. We um, came into this, this business with the premise that recruiting is an amazing profession, but it's a very under glorified one compared to uh, equally you know, promoted professions like law or consulting or technology or entertainment, et cetera. Um, and so we thought that if we could build a company uh, that's kind of elevated in nature in terms of the you know, experience it offers to, to great people, then we would be able to attract 
a higher quality of, of recruiter uh, and, 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 and therefore kind of show the industry uh, that recruiting, uh, uh, you know, can, can and should be seen on equal footing with some of the other great professions. So we've, we've, we've always, you know, focused our energies on investing in our internal culture, being innovative uh, with our respective culture. Uh, and it's that uh, kind of philosophy or attitude that has, you know, allowed us to, um, you know, create some of the you know, attributes that, you know, we, we, we can kind of show for ourselves as, you know, help, help, help us uh, attract, retain, uh, and, um, uh, you know, be, be you know, sort, sort of leader in this, in this respective space. So I noticed that within the Inc. Uh, family, you've not only been kind of recognized for your fast growth uh, two times on the list, but also for a best place to work. And one of the specific phrases that came with that was, we put our company culture first at every step, which is why we focus on our employees before company profits. What does that mean? It, it basically means that people come first. Uh, so we, we have a philosophy that says, um, everything starts from the, from, the, from the person. If the person is operating at their best uh, in a supportive environment where they feel comfortable and set up to succeed, uh, they could then be their best for themselves, they could be their best for their team, they could be their best for their clients, and then uh, profits naturally, uh, naturally follow. Uh, we thought that, that was a better philosophy for us to follow than one that says, make your profits and then people get the returns or the, or the dividends. So it kind of flips flips the equation a little bit. Um, and ever since we made that, we had that kind of realization and made that shift is about very coincidentally when we started to see uh, very accelerated, uh, very accelerated. Hold on for a second. Boris had just said a few minutes ago, people come first. Now, when you think about the way you run your business, are you putting the numbers first, the work first, the client first? Are you truly putting people first? Well, a lot of the research of fast growth companies would probably tell you you know, logically that they put the numbers first. They put growing the company before anything else. But the reality is 94% plus actually put employees first. I ask these questions all the time to leaders. I challenge them and the way they operate, the way they think about their business is they're putting employees first. They're creating a place for people to operate their best. And you think about that, that's great leadership. Back to the interview with Boris. Well, let's go back to the time before you made that shift was, I'm sure it's, you always thought and people were important. You always thought that, um, you know, leadership and culture were something critical to, to what you're building, but you didn't put it first and foremost. But what do you, would you say that you put first and foremost before you made that revolution? It was uh, customers and whatever it took for customers to achieve their respective goals. So I, I very vividly remember the dichotomy of, of, of before and before it was, um, customers need what they need and our team needs to do whatever it takes for them to achieve that. Even though our team might be unhappy serving that customer, even though our team might be, you know, put in a disadvantaged position, um, uh, having to, uh, having to, uh, you know, sacrifice all sorts of things that, you know, make them their respective best. We would encourage them and insist that they respectively do that. Even if it was at you know, the expense of that individual, you know, deciding to move on, uh, from being, we were okay with that. Um, and then we shifted our philosophy uh, and, and the shift in philosophy said, OK, we need to really focus on our people. And when we focus on our people, uh, then everything else falls into falls into place. I, I really love the fact that you you made that relativization, <laughs> made, made that moment um, and you've actually seen the benefit behind it. So just briefly, what has changed in the way that you're leading that has made this work? From a, from a leadership perspective, um, it has to, what, what, whatever words you put on paper, whatever, whatever you know, vision uh, one is able to share or, or does share has to show up in real life. Uh, and so if you say people first, but then your actions show that you're actually not caring for people in, in, in very you know, one-off small situations, you know, approving PTO, uh, supporting flexibility, um, uh, 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 giving space for, uh, for, 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 for growth and overcoming challenge. I mean, very, very small, specific things. Um, then company, then, then, then the company, you know, has a sense of misalignment, uh, between words and, and, and action. So it's, a, there, there's a couple stages to like experiencing a culture. One is, you know, defining it and, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of companies have values and a, and a, and a stated, uh, a stated mission. Um, and then the next step is to actually live those things. 
Uh, and then the next step after that is to find ways to continue living those things in areas where they may not necessarily be, be visible. So it takes all three uh, for a culture to be successful. One of the things I talk about a lot on the show, a lot with my clients, and I'll ask them the question, and I, I want you to kind of chime in here, and I'm, I know I'm throwing you a curveball. Um, what are the rituals that you really kind of can see contribute to you living by this concept of people first? Um, whenever we make whenever we make decisions, uh, we've 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 we found that um, we, we've, we've created the metaphor internally of a triangle uh, in each. Uh, each angle of the triangle uh, represents a different interest. So there's the people edge, there's the company edge, and then there's the client edge. Um, we'll look at any decision uh, that we make across all three things. What's the thing that we could do that, that, that's really going to be in the service of the person? That's really going to be in the interest of the uh, company. That's really going to be in the interest of the, of, of the customer. Um, ultimately, our goal is to find a balance where all parties are respectively interested. Um, but it's incredibly important for us to recognize what that, what that people first uh, edge uh, is, is telling us because ultimately coming back to our philosophy, if our, if our people are happy, if our people are fulfilled, uh, that then feeds success for the company and for, our, and for our customers. I've done a lot of conversations around this and you're probably not aware of, of my research, but um, one of the things that I wanted to share with you, fast growth companies like on the Inc list, um, when I ask them this, this very, I call it the impossible question, um, you won't think it's so impossible because of the way you think, but I say, as a leader, what's more important, your customers or your employees? You would naturally say. Yeah, our, our, they're both very important. Uh, we, yes. can't live, we can't live <laughs> without the other, but, but happy customers and unhappy people in, uh, in, in, in our experience are going to be less successful than happy uh, people, because uh, happy people can contribute to happy customers. The other I, way around doesn't necessarily. I love the way you frame that. Um, and it's an impossible question, and I, I truly know, but I've asked so many leaders this question, 94% plus on the ink list will say that its employees are more important. Yeah. And it's because they believe, they're smaller companies, they're not big. Like I've been told by really big uh, CEOs of Fortune 50 companies that, that, that I'm wrong. And I've, I've had to sit there and take in it. And I've, I've, I've sat through 20 minutes of why I'm wrong, um, that it has to be customers. And I, I really love the fact that you're willing to share this and live it. And, and you know, building a company, it proves that you understand that your company is not just about to make money, but it's out there to create a place for people to, to serve this, the community, right? You're serving, yeah. you're, you've got families, Tell us just one more thing about this whole concept of people first that, that really helped you tune in to why it's so important. Yeah, um, ultimately money's the, money's the result. Uh, money is what comes from all of these things um, uh, being developed uh, and, and uh, value, value respectively uh, served. Um, you know, our, looking at people from a, from a people first lens, uh, we have to recognize the unique perspective that each person brings, the unique circumstances that their, uh, that their lives uh, involve, um, the flexibility uh, and the unique experience that it requires for them to be their, their respective best. And when a company is able to offer that you know, level of flexibility, uh, support, uh, inclusivity, uh, then, then, then those individuals could be their respective best. And I'll, I'll give you just like an, an, an example um, around our uh, our journey going to a fully distributed uh, culture. We found that we'd have different individuals who work in offices and different individuals that work that work remote. Uh, and in getting to know our remote team members, uh, we found that there was a point in time where they felt subservient uh, or uh, they were made to feel less than uh, because of uh, 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 some some you know in inequitabilities that existed um, in our in our culture. And so it was important then for us to take some steps to. Uh, shift some of our existing practices, uh, like go from meetings where you know one one tile is you know twelve remote people that or sorry twelve in person people that only talk to each other, and then three remote people that feel very left out. So we we, we moved to a, a structure where we had uh, equal tiles uh, for everyone, even though the, half of the people on those tiles were in a similar physical office. That allowed for an equitable experience to be created, and then people felt. Uh, a, 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 a better sense of, of, of fairness of, you know, place that company. Uh, and that created like a very kind of uplifting uh, experience for, 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 
for, for, for all, all respective sides. That's like a, just a small example um, of steps that we took to see that, see that ultimately achieved. Hold on for a second. Boris just talked about money is the result. When you think about it, there's always a cause and effect inside of our businesses. Many times we have marketing is the cause, the effect may be new sales. Well, when you think about building a business, money is always the effect of what's really going on. It's the, it's the after effect, it's the result. So what are the core issues that will allow you to improve that? Well, I believe having people that are thinking for themselves, empowered in a unique way, and really have the kind of trust, allows them to think and push the business beyond where it is today, is critical. Leaders that create new leaders, and all of the aspects that go around with creating more ownership, even when you don't have the financial tools available to you. Those are critical aspects to you being a strong leader and creating company that makes money, but because they have the right people in place and they have the right culture to support it all. Back to the interview with Boris. I love that, that you think through that level of detail. Um, many companies probably haven't done that. Um, maybe it's because most everybody is still remote <laughs> in some ways. Um, yeah. I know we came here, Boris, to talk about diversity and inclusion. When you think about building a culture uh, did you set out to to have diversity or did it something that evolved along this journey? Very much evolved. Uh, I, uh, I, I consider um, diversity and the concept of inclusion and concept of equitability, at least for myself as, as a leader, to, to one be of uh, perpetual growth uh, and, and evolution. I'll tell you just a very, very, very specific story where it kind of clicked in my head uh, the, the importance of it. It was very late. I'm a, I'm a slow learner. It came very late in the 18 years that we've been in business. Uh, Maybe just four years ago or so, um, we had we had several women in in leadership, and uh, they had for for you know one reason or another, each respectively chosen to move on to the point where we had um, uh, everyone in leadership was uh, was 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 a man, um, and a couple of a uh, couple of uh, uh, brave women at our company brought up uh, to, um, to 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 myself and and, and our other uh, partners uh, the concept of. Um, uh, of women in leadership and why that was so important. And that was honestly, from my lens, seen as a, uh, uh, like a, what, what is it that, what is it that uh, a, a woman can do in leadership that, that we can't do? Why, why can't, why can't, you know, why, why can't we just, you know, serve your needs? And we then became very aware or a lot more aware of um, differences in leadership, value in uh, uh, diversity in, in leadership and the different value that, 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 that different individuals who, bring different perspectives can bring to their respective company and team. So that was like the very beginning of a, of, of a journey. Uh, and that helped us uh, become open to the different perspectives from our team, from uh, outside coaches uh, and uh, partners who we spoke with um, around you know, uh, um, different dynamics that different individuals bring. I'm, I'm just speaking about gender in this case, men and women, different dynamics that that brings to, to a leadership team we learned about concepts of, of, of inclusivity, how uh, different people of different backgrounds uh, interact uh, with, uh, you know, with, with, with common practices at companies so that, that, that compelled us to become first aware and then to take action and, and, and make changes and then see the benefits of those respective uh, changes in the form of you know, improved, improved culture and experience. You have to be listening to this on YouTube. Fantastic. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you like the content. Subscribe, make sure you don't miss an episode. And you can smash the bell notification button. If you want to be a better leader, tune in to Growth Think. Now, I know we've, we've been focused on the gender thing. I would imagine that you can't have this diversity of inclusion without talking about uh, diversity of thought, diversity of you know, religious beliefs and you know, sexual orientation and whatnot. Is that something that you guys have, have wrestled with as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we have uh, some you know, standard, standard you know, mechanisms by which to measure uh, diversity. So uh, following the federal guidelines of underrepresented groups and, and, and minorities, uh, and then just looking at our company across its existing uh, demographics, whether it be uh, age or race or gender or sexual orientation, uh, and then uh, you know, through the lens of understanding the benefits of um, uh, uh, building a diverse uh, team and, and organization, you know, we've, we've, we've taken steps uh, to, uh, you know, uh, expand our diversity from you know, via, via, via recruiting, 
uh, and then ultimately once recruited uh, through, 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 through retention and growth. Boris, a, a big question here is, what are the results you're seeing when you have embraced diversity and inclusion? The, um, the experience that comes from uh, employing a diverse team um, involves uh, topics being brought up for, for, for discussion in a variety of different, uh, in a variety of different settings, uh, being able to um, uh, uh, capture uh, various different perspectives uh, and um, insights, and then uh, being supportive of, of our team and company to uh, enact on uh, those respective uh, changes uh, or opportunities as they uh, as they respectively uh, become uh, become available. So I'd say biggest change I would say is uh, is awareness, uh, and awareness may seem inactionable, uh, but I, I I come from a place that says awareness is kind of the first step towards action. Uh, and so through this awareness, then each person kind of leaves that situation, you know, being a little more informed, a little bit more, uh, you know, one step closer to action than they, than they previously were. Uh, and then from there, you know, via supporting individuals to enact on whatever that, that awareness may encourage them to, to enact on uh, is where, you know, change is respectively, uh, in, in, uh, uh, you know, inspired and, and, and comes from. So as you've grown a business to, you know, around 100 employees, it, it gets harder and harder to, to really keep all tuned in to all the uniqueness that's going on. How do you do that specifically to be, become the leader that your team craves? Part of it is um, just being, being aware of the, of, the, of the world around us and recognizing you know, what it is that our team you know, responds to, where they're challenged, where they're uh, you know, craving uh, or, or in need of, of respective support. I've become, I become through this journey uh, 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 very aware, uh, with all respect to all the continued growth I need to do, very aware of uh, the importance of my role as a leader. It's not enough to just, you know, allow my team to do whatever they think is best. It's important for me as a leader uh, to be able to uh, very clearly and visibly, uh, you know, proclaim or, or, or state or reinforce uh, uh, any, any support that's respectively necessary. And then from there, our team then has no, our team knows that they have their company's back, uh, so to say, to go to go go do what they need. I'll, I'll, I'll give you I'll, I'll give you an example. Our company spends a lot of time talking about diversity recruiting practices. We're in the business of, of of recruiting. We also spend a lot of time studying inclusion ourselves, and are therefore hyper aware of what inclusive and or and or uninclusive may look like on a on a client site. Um, because we spend so much time talking about it, uh, if one of our team members feels that they are working for a company, a client uh, that may uh, be practicing uh, uh, something that you know doesn't fall in line with, with with inclusive or doesn't fall in line with their values, um, they know that we're a company where they could they could bring that up to leadership. Uh, leadership will listen. Uh, will have an open discussion around uh, how best to navigate that situation. Sometimes we'll, we'll you know, offer techniques uh, to our team uh, to, to work through situations. Sometimes uh, we'll escalate ourselves and have very direct confrontational uh, conversations with our, with our clients. Usually most, 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 most of the stuff is like stuff that, that our clients are just unaware of. Um, we'll help kind of bring this up and our clients are usually incredibly thankful and appreciative uh, for you know, bringing up open discussions and uh, helping, helping uh, you know, uh, move things respectively uh, forward. For, for us, examples like examples would be uh, you know, bias finding its way into the interview process as an example that might be standing in the way of a company uh, hiring for that diversity quotient that they might, you know, be uh, trying to respect to achieve. That would be an example of them standing in their own way without even knowing it. Um, and so working through that is an example of like a nuance uh, that, um, uh, that, you know, our diversity and inclusion practices uh, would uh, kind of surface up. Well, it's a really unique perspective to know that you're working with so many companies um, to hire the right people and looking at their own diversity inclusion practices in order to be a, that, that partner, you've got to live it too. So Boris, thanks for sharing your perspectives here on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Great to connect and, and uh, talk about all this. I love interviews where leaders are humble enough to say, you know, I didn't have it all figured out. This evolved over time. Much like the way you are evolved as a leader, it evolves over time. Now, a lot of leaders have outside counsel. They have outside support, advisors, coaches, if you will. And I do that for a lot of leaders that want to take it, their business to the next level, take their leadership to the next level. So here's my call to action. If you think that you want to take your business to the next level, make sure you go to the free training that I have just for you. 
all for leaders, go to genehammond.com forward slash training. You'll get the three mistakes and building a team of A players. You can fix these mistakes just by knowing what they are, but I'm there to support you if you want to take the next step. Make sure you go to genehammond.com forward slash training. When you think about leadership, you think about growth, make sure you think of the growth think tank. As always, lead with courage. We'll see you next time.